Hi friends, Father Scott again. In our gospel reading for today, some people try to get Jesus embroiled in the political issues of the day by asking him that famous question, should we uh, pay taxes to Caesar? And Jesus gives his famous answer, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. So that always raises the next question, what do we owe to Caesar and what do we owe to God? Well, one thing that we owe to Caesar, meaning the political authorities that, uh, that are um, you know, charged with, with running our society and, and uh, keeping things going, is our respect. And uh, the laws and those that are given to enforce them, uh, and those who are given to make them, uh, deserve our respect and the laws of our land deserve to be uh, obeyed. But we also owe more to Caesar than just blind obedience uh, and paying our taxes. And that ties into what we owe to God. To God, we owe our very existence. To God, the, we owe the fact that everything that is exists, including us. And we also owe to God that obedience which is above obedience to any state, to any system, to any philosophy, to any one person. God is the author of everything that is, the maker of all things. And he has shown himself time and again to be the one who loves everything that he has made and who sustains it all in being. We owe to him the, the, our highest obedience and love. And from him we receive the right ordering of our lives. From him we learn how we should be living together as human beings, and what is the dignity of every human being. Being made in the image and likeness of God, every human being is created with an inherent dignity and is loved by God as a unique and unrepeatable event in the history of the world. Each of us as individuals are loved by God and so worthy of each other's respect. And every life is precious in the sight of God. So, what does that have to do with what we owe to Caesar? Because God deserves our highest allegiance above any political system or philosophy, we owe it to those political systems, those philosophies, to hold them up to the light of the truth that God shows us, to hold them accountable to God's standards of justice and love. We, as uh, people made in the image of God, we as the body of Christ in the world, need to be showing the world what life under God looks like. We need to be reminding the world of that dignity of every human person. And when that dignity is violated, we owe it to our society to point that out and to stand up for justice. We do so recognizing also the dignity of those people who may think differently than we do, and even the dignity of those people who act contrary to God's law of love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we go through this time of, uh, of great unrest, as we are all uh, troubled by both the uh, terrible event of the death of George Floyd that sparked all of the unrest in our society. And as we uh, feel with our African-American brothers and sisters, the anguish and the anger that comes from the injustice that's been perpetrated on them, 
and also as we feel the anxiety and the fear of all those who see the violence that has erupted and wonder where our society is going, we need to be holding up God's vision for what human life, our life together, should look like. We cannot allow uh, things to continue as they have. We cannot allow the only recourse for people who are suffering to be violence. And neither can we allow violence to overshadow um, our, our civil discourse and the peaceful running of our society. We have to find a way through uh, the middle where all people and their views are respected, but, but also justice and peace. Our justice is done and peace is maintained. We believe as Christians that transformation is possible. We believe that society can be different. When I look at my own life, I know that God has made my life different. And he can make our communal life different as well. If we allow ourselves to be enlightened by his love, to be reminded of the depth that to which he was willing to go for the reconciliation of the world to himself. And in our reconciliation with him, our reconciliation with each other. God bless you, and I'll be talking to you again soon.